Hey, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be watching this video. Um, to anyone that's never watched any of my videos before, my name is Tom Zabo. I'm a solution specialist, um, formerly of VMware, now working for Broadcom. Um, for, for my subscribers and anyone that knows me, I want to first apologize for not putting out any content for almost six months. Um, you know, part of as you can see on my screen here, um, you know, we've been transitioning from VMware over to Broadcom. It's been, uh, we've been quite busy trying to figure out, you know, new offerings, um, new customers that we're working with, you know, just everything that goes with an acquisition. So uh, I apologize. I'm going to hopefully uh, catch up, get some more content out, um, you know, covering different components of the ARIA suite based on the new Broadcom packaging, uh, you know, basically our, a component of the ARIA suite, really either ARIA suite standard or ARIA suite enterprise will be included with uh, all of the vSphere related packages going forward, which is good news for me. Uh, you know, my products will be out there even more. Um, so anyways, I, like I said, I apologize for the lack of content. Hopefully my videos so far have been helpful, I'd like to continue putting them out. Um, today, I'm in the process of rebuilding my one of my lab environments. Uh, so I redeployed ARIA automation. So I basically have to go through the entire setup. I'm gonna retie it into um, a vSphere environment I have. And I figured why not create a video while I'm doing this? Um, you know, real basic, this is gonna be a quick one where I just basically, you know, fresh install of ARIA automation. I'm gonna show you how to set up a cloud account. It's how we refer to it, which will connect to, um, you know, my vSphere environment. And you can see really, you know, like, like I said, the steps are really straightforward. What we're gonna do is create a cloud account. The endpoint that we hook into from a vSphere perspective is vCenter, no surprise, hopefully. Um, so, you know, so we need a service account. We wanna make sure DNS is working properly. I mean, you could use IP addresses, but DNS is always the right way to go. Um, so I already have a service account set up. I know my vCenter, uh, fully qualified domain name. So this should be really straightforward. From there, we're going to then just take a look at creating a cloud zone to actually pull in and understand the compute resources that are available to deploy virtual machines onto. So we'd be looking at clusters or individual hosts at that point in time. This particular lab is gonna have a single cluster. So again, it's going to be relatively straightforward, but same type of uh, process applies no matter what type of vSphere environment you're connecting to. Uh, as always, I have a few resources that I'll put in the, uh, you know, in the description of my video, uh, so, you know, some primary documentation, working with automation assembler, uh, you know, calling out exactly what we need for the service account, um, and then how to create a vCenter cloud account. So I'm gonna show you also how you can kind of access a guided setup inside of the program itself, which makes life significantly easier. But like everything that we have um, at Broadcom, we have good documentation to, you know, for you to reference and work with. So let's jump into my lab. All right, so as you can see, I'm logged into my fresh ARIA automation build. Really haven't done anything here whatsoever. Uh, basically I have it I have my IDM tied to my my uh, Active Directory domain, so I can I can log in with AD users, which that might be a decent video to do in the future. Um, so a couple of things I want to call out. So one, uh, you can see we we can launch a quick start right here to basically just get up and running really quickly. Um, it'll help you create that cloud account and and just get started. I'm not going to use this. I, I do recommend starting that way. I'm not going to simply because I've done this enough times. And for my purposes, the way I'm going to rebuild this, it, it doesn't make any sense to do that. So I'm going to go into the assembler tile here. You can see my user account has access to all of the services that I have deployed. Assembler is where you do the you know most of your work around um, tying into your infrastructure, creating uh, you know, uh, templates, doing extensibility. You know, the majority of your actual administrative work, I would say, is going to be in Assembler. Um, you can see even as I logged in, again, here's that guided setup, just giving me an idea of basically what I need to do 
to start, in this case, deploying virtual machines from a template. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click continue. You can also see we have guided setup that comes up over here on the right. If you close it, we can reaccess it by clicking guided setup here. And it's, it, it's a great way to get started and start to understand, you know, how things work, what you need to do with ARIA automation. Um, like here, exactly what we're going to do. We're going to add a cloud account. So you can see how I access this. I went to infrastructure and it basically defaulted to this. Um, but if it doesn't, you want to go to infrastructure. And then on the left-hand side, at the very bottom, we're going to have connections. And we're going to go to cloud accounts. And you can see these are the different endpoints or, or clouds, really, that, that we interact with. Um, in this case, I'm going to tie into a vCenter server. So I'm going to go ahead and click the tile here. I'm going to give it a name. Usually, it makes sense to just, to me, to just give the name the same, you know, what the actual name of the, the um, your, what your fully qualified domain of the vCenter is. I could call it lab vCenter, what, what, you know, whatever makes sense. If you have multiple vCenters, maybe you want to use a more friendly name. I'm just going to put Tom's lab. There's my fully qualified domain name. And then here's where we're going to put in. Oh, that is not the account I want to use. I don't recommend using um, administrator at vSphere.local. I have a service account that I've already set up. Let me just reference that. And a service account is a good idea. Um, you know, so it'll help with password rotation. It'll help, um, you know, the last thing you want to do is tie it to your user account. And then if for some reason your account gets locked out, you change your password. There's any number of reasons why you don't want to tie it to, you know, you want to have a service account, just like basically anything else from an integration perspective. A um, couple other things to call out real quickly. Anytime you see this little circle with an eye, um, you can click that. And again, it, it's for in-product help. So, you know, hopefully everyone that's watching this video is familiar with a fully qualified domain name. But if you're not, there's an example, um, capability tags. I don't typically recommend using a capability tag at the cloud account level. So uh, possibly another video topic here, capability tags go along with constraints inside of a template. So that's how you can craft where your virtual machines are logically going to end up when they're deployed, depending on what kind of dependencies they may have. So it's a, it's a way that you can make sure that if, um, you know, just as an example, maybe you have a, a group of developers that have a little playground of sorts for development testing. You can make sure anytime they're deploying, they end up in that development cluster rather than deploying into production. So um, probably something I should do a video on as well. But um, just wanted to just talk through that really quickly. So once we have everything in here, and you can see it doesn't take much. FQDN, username, password. We're going to click validate. Hopefully, I have my password correct. Uh, we're going to accept the certificate. I'm running self-signed, so no surprise there. It's good. If, if you get a prompt like that, that immediately tells should tell you, okay, it, it is reaching out to the vCenter. Um, now, in this case... Oh, I know what I did. All right, sorry about that. Note to self and anybody else that ever wants to do a demo video is make sure you have the correct service account before you start to do the install. So now I should be good. Let me click validate. It's going to reach out. There we go. That's what I was expecting to see. And you can see, all right, so it validated me and then, all right, you know, I'm going to allow provisioning to the data center. So this is my, if I had my vCenter up, you would see my virtual data center is called lab. 
Uh, I'm not going to create a cloud zone automatically. I'm going to do this manually just to show you um, how it works. And if I had an NSX manager, I can also um, add it in here if I previously integrated with NSX. And site associations is for um, SRM, you, have, you know, for capabilities of, you know, when you have VMs that are potentially moving from one site to the other, that, that is something that you need to be aware of. So we're going to go ahead and click add. Give it a second. Cool. Click continue. Now, if we come back to cloud accounts, we'll see there's my cloud account. Um, what's nice is there's this nice status screen which can show you, all right, we're syncing okay. Uh, image synchronization, so it means it's already gone out and looked to see what vSphere templates are available that I could potentially work with. And it's, it's online, it's available for deployment. Next step is to come here and create a cloud zone. So we're going to come, you know, again, under infrastructure, this and you, where you're going to spend the majority of your time initially, I would say, setting up ARIA automation. You know, so infrastructure under configure cloud zones, we're going to click new cloud zone. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to look, we're going to see, okay, what account is out here? Um, so I only have one right now. It's like I said, brand new install. Here's my vCenter. Um, we're going to call this a cloud, you know, name for the cloud zone. So we're going to say, um, Actually, let's do lab dash vSphere. Um, it's vSphere lab because I'm hopefully going to tie this into a couple other clouds at some point. So I want to make it real clear. Uh, this is where you can control the placement policy. So how it's going to um, look to place virtual machines, compute resources as they're deployed. Um, so the default is basically just to look at the first available host in the cloud zone. Um, you can see there's some other options, which, you know, do we want to pack it? Do we want to spread it, um, spread it out, right? You know, distribute your, your work, you know, your workloads, which probably makes the most sense. Um, advanced, if you wanted to tie it into ARIA operations, I'm going to leave it at uh, default for now. Um, capability tag. So this is where it starts to make more sense to, to add in some capability tags potentially. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna do environment and vSphere for my tag. And you can see there was no tag found, so it's gonna automatically create a new one. We come to this compute tab and we can see what we're adding in. So I do not want this witness um, to.tomsabo.com host to be available. So by default, it's going to include everything. I want to manually select the compute so I can choose my cluster. This is a uh, vSAN witness, so I do not want to deploy any virtual machines to it. Let's see, it's now in here. <clears throat> um, again, just wanted to call out. If I click guided setup, now you can see you know, that it's changed the focus to cloud zones, um, does have some notes on tagging. And then if I had a project that, you know, once you create a project and assign a cloud zone, allow someone in the project to deploy to the cloud zone, the project will be listed here. I do not have a project set up yet. That's going to be the next step that I do, but I want to think about something before I do it. Um, so now... Got my cloud zone set the way I want. Um, oh, you can also select what folder by default it will deploy your virtual machines into for this cloud zone. Um, and you can see it automatically went out and, and picked up my, um, my vSphere folders that I've got set up here. I'm going to default to set them into development. There are ways that you can change this through extensibility, um, but for now, basically everything I deploy I want it to end up in this folder. So works for me in this environment. So we're gonna go ahead and click create. And now I've got a cloud zone and a cloud account and I'm well on my way to you know, providing infrastructure that I can deploy um, templated virtual machines onto. So that is all the time I have for today. Uh, hopefully the video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, and like I said, uh, hopefully we will also not wait six months for another video from me. So thank you. Have a good one.